Hi, Ben from Granberg here. Uh, back again to talk to you some more about chain. Last time we talked about uh, pitch gauge and drive link count, and those are the pieces of information you'll need to order a ripping chain. But we never really talked about what a ripping chain is and why you would want to order it from us here at Granberg. So, here to fill that gap today. So, ripping chain is obviously by the name uh, something that you use to rip logs rather than fell them, buck them etc. And that means basically that you're going to be cutting along the length of the log rather than down through like cookies. Um, now one of the first questions I get about ripping chain is can I just use a regular chain? Well, yes you can. Uh, the thing is when you use a standard chain for ripping the design of the chain is going to have a tendency to give you a cut that looks like this. It's going to wiggle. And that's because the 35 degree angle on your standard crosscut chain wants to grab the, uh, the grain on the wood and that sort of pulls it up a little bit and then the, the tooth on the bottom grabs the lower part of the grain and that pips it down a little bit and so anybody who's ever tried to rip with the standard uh, crosscut chain can, uh, can demonstrate for you how that turns out. So uh, the first thing that we do for a ripping chain is we sharpen it rather than 35 degrees which is what most uh, manufacturers have it leave the factory as. Ours, ours gets sharpened to 10 degrees. It gives you a much more aggressive angle, and that sort of mitigates the, uh, the tendency for that chain to want to riffle around on you. Um, secondly, um, why our ripping chain? Um, now, you can buy ripping chain from other manufacturers, and it'll have that same 10 degree modification, but the problem is, with 10 degrees as opposed to 35 degrees is it's putting a much heavier load on your saw per tooth. Uh, in other words, each tooth has to do a lot more work to get through the wood at 10 degrees than it does at 35 degrees. So what we do is we take, uh, and through the magic of video editing, you should be able to see some images behind me here as I'm talking. Uh, what we do is we take a standard full comp chain, which is a, a left cutter and a right cutter and a left cutter and a right cutter, and uh, two of every four teeth we file down to about half their original width and those become what are called scoring cutters. Those scoring cutters take out the left and the right part of the cut and they leave a little lip behind. That lip is then cleared by teeth three and four in the set. So rather than doing half of the work passing through the cut, each tooth is now doing a quarter of the work. So coupled with that more aggressive edge, it uh, provides a much better surface. And if you've ever looked at a felled tree from the butt end, um, versus a, a tree milled with some ripping chain, uh, you'll notice there's a significant difference in the quality of cut that you got on the butt as you would on the surface of the, uh, the slab there. So that's the, uh, the scoring and the clearing cutters. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people like to ask about ripping, or not ripping chain, but uh, skip to chain. Uh, that will work for ripping. Uh, however, it is typically sharpened to that 35 degree angle, so you do run into the tendency for it to riffle on you, um, but uh, we do sort of have, uh, at least in 404, a uh, skip rip chain, which uh, operates about 20% faster than, uh, than the normal stuff. Problem with using skip to chain is that um, it has half of the teeth of a normal chain. So if you happen to have forgotten to clean the bark properly and there's a piece of stone in there, or if somebody 30 years ago was using that tree for target practice, there's a bunch of slugs in there, or uh, as one guy pointed out to me, he had a bottle of domestic beer that the tree grew around. If you hit any of that stuff with a skip tooth chain, it's basically game over, your chain's dead, it's time to buy a new chain. Whereas with, a, uh, with our ripping chain, which is full comp, Hopefully by the time you've noticed that something's wrong, you haven't destroyed all the teeth and you're able to uh, fix the damage. So moving on to some uh, frequently asked questions about uh, ripping chain. Uh, first we have um, a lot of people will call up and say that they get powder, whereas normally when they're cutting uh, felling, say they get these nice long ribbons or chips. And the reason for that is, uh, and again this should be a graphic, over here, but uh, this is a, a cross section of log, and when you're coming in with your regular saw, you're only attacking one ring at a time. That's why you get those nice long ribbons. 
when you're coming at it from this way, you're hitting every single one of these rings, so there's not that much chance for the tooth to pick up much wood, and that's why you get a lot finer dust. Um, also, as a safety precaution, we sort of leave the uh, depth gauges a little bit higher on our ripping chain so they don't bite quite as much, and so you'll get a smaller chip as a result of that as well. Uh, a lot of people want to know why chain dulls so quickly. Um, that again has to do with the amount of work that it has to do hitting every single one of these uh, tree rings. Um, unfortunately, there is no way around that. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, and we do recommend that if you're going to be doing a lot of milling, you get a backup chain. Um, how often should you sharpen chain? Uh, chain should be sharpened approximately every three or four passes through the log. Um, less if you're doing hardwood um, and uh, generally uh, it'll take about uh, yeah about three or four passes through the log and the uh, the saw will tell you actually when it's when it's time to sharpen your chain you'll just stop moving and you'll know it's time to bring a sharpener into play um, people ask also if uh, there's a different ripping chain for hardwood versus softwood there is not uh, we only match the ripping chain to your saw um, and if you need uh, advice with that, I refer you to our, the other video I did on pitch gauge and drive link count. Um, but if you find that you do have a lot of hardwood, uh, unfortunately, uh, your only option is to be, uh, you know, get yourself a more powerful saw. Uh, lastly, uh, is there any kind of ripping chain we don't carry? Um, I get calls sometimes, uh, people called around for a particular pitch or gauge of ripping chain, they don't have it. Uh, in other spots. We do carry most ripping chains. Uh, the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head that we will not have is micro chain. Uh, that would be uh, what would appear on say a pole saw or uh, something similarly small, sometimes an electric. A lot of electrics actually have micro chain and uh, we don't stock that. Likewise, we don't stock uh, harvester ripping chain, which would be something like a 404, 080, something like that. Some, ridiculously large size. So the very, very small and the very, very large, we do not carry 99% of the rest of the chains and bars will have a ripping chain for you. So that wraps up uh, your little ripping chain Q&A session. Uh, stay tuned for more videos from Granberg and um, happy milling.